Well, amines are bases, so bases react with acids, right? And these organic bases are going to react with acids in a very similar fashion, and they're going to form salt and water. That's what acids and bases do. The proton from the acid, sorry, there's an amber alert that just came through. I won't be seeing that car anytime soon, so we'll ignore that for now. Okay, the proton from the acid is going to bond to the nitrogen using that lone pair. And like I mentioned earlier, this is called a coordinate covalent bond. So here we have the amine, and here we have hydrochloric acid. So the acid donates the proton, the base accepts the proton, and we end up with an amine salt. So this has a positive charge, and that has a negative charge. We just learned how to name these guys. This would be, what, methyl ammonium ion, right? So we end up with an amine salt. We've got um, the, pos the cation is a substituted ammonium ion, and the negative ion comes from the acid. So naming these follows the same pattern as naming um, inorganic ionic compounds, where you've got the name of the positive ion and a space and the name of the negative ion. So this guy here, this is the ethyl ammonium ion. So that's ethyl ammonium with chloride. So ethyl ammonium chloride. This is dimethyl ammonium bromide because this, this ammonium has two methyl groups on it. There's an older method um, that treats these as amine acid complexes. And the reason that we need to even mention this is because this is still used in the pharmaceutical industry. And if you look at some of the ingredients in your over-the-counter or prescription medicines, you'll see things like um, such and such chloride or such and such sulfate. And so they'll name this guy dimethylamine hydrochloride instead of dimethylammonium chloride. So they're just, they're, they're looking at this as an amine complexing with the acid instead of what the chemist understands really to happen is that it forms this ionic compound. So dimethylamine hydrochloride. Many amines, especially the larger ones, are insoluble in water, but almost all amine salts are soluble because they're ionic. And so drugs containing amine functional groups are usually administered as amine salts because then they are soluble in water. Your body is mostly aqueous, and so you want the drugs to be soluble in water so that they can be absorbed better. A lot of amines have unpleasant odors. That fishy smell that fish has is due to amines. Have you ever wondered why people put lemon juice on their fish? A lot of people like to squeeze fresh lemon on their fish. What you're doing is you've got an acid-base reaction going on. The acid in the lemon juice reacts with the basic amines in the fish, and it neutralizes the fishy smell which then people who are sensitive to that smell find that the fish tastes better when it doesn't smell like that. So you can add lemon juice, vinegar would do the same thing. Those amine salts are generally odorless. So this conversion between amines and amine salts is very reversible. It's just an acid-base reaction. If we have acid present, we're going to get the amine salt. If you have base present, you're going to get the amine. And it can just go back and forth, back and forth very easily. So writing reactions, uh, sorry, writing equations for reactions involving these amine salts. So if we've got this guy, this is a trisubstituted amine, a tertiary amine. If we react that with hydrochloric acid, what are we going to get?
So we don't generally show the lone pairs on the nitrogen, but remember that they're there. There's that, the lone pairs, and the proton from the acid can go hold on to those lone pairs. So we'll end up with this methyl group still. And, sorry, that's an ethyl group. And these two methyl groups. And we're going to have a hydrogen here. And this has a positive charge. And then what's left? A chloride ion. So what would the name of that compound be, that salt? Close. Ethyl dimethyl. Ethyl dimethyl ammonium chloride. Let's look at this next one. So again, here's the amine group, and this is an acid. We recognize acids because their formulas start with H. So an H from the acid is going to come over to the nitrogen. CH3, CH2, N. Now we could write that this way, NH3 plus. And then what's left from the sulfuric acid? It only lost one hydrogen. Hydrogen sulfate is left. So that would be ethyl ammonium hydrogen sulfate or ethyl ammonium bisulfate. But the name of the name of this ion is hydrogen sulfate. In reaction C we have an ammonium salt reacting with sodium hydroxide. The, the amine is a base. When it accepts a proton, then it becomes the conjugate acid. So now this can act as an acid and give, the, give its extra hydrogen to the sodium hydroxide. Let's see if I can find room to write all of this. CH3, CH2. And we're losing that H. CH3, CH3. And then the hydrogen, let's draw some arrows. The hydrogen goes to the sodium hydroxide making water, and then what's left? We've got sodium ion and bromide ion. So we're going to get an amine, water, and sodium bromide. And all of these reactions really are equilibria. They go both ways. Any questions? What, what's important to be able to see is that it's this nitrogen. This is where the action's going on. What's attached to it doesn't really matter. So we're looking for a pattern. And then if you're given a problem like this, you just copy down all the stuff that's hanging off, but you're looking at that nitrogen and what's happening at the nitrogen.